Now, it's hard to find someone who hasn't heard of Squid Game. In recent weeks, this South Korean drama has been loved by millions of people around the world and has become a major sensation of world cinema. And this is due not only to the interesting plot but also the very spectacular scenes. How are the most dangerous of them filmed? What did the staging of death games look like? And what did the actors risk? Let's find out. This is Infinity, and in this episode, I'll tell and show you how the most dangerous scenes from Squid Game were filmed. Be warned, there will be a lot of spoilers. Red Light, Green Light The first game became one of the main symbols of the drama. In just a couple of weeks, a lot of parodies were filmed of the first scene. Billions of videos appeared on TikTok with the sound of a doll singing a song, and the scene itself didn't leave anyone unimpressed. In large part, that's because it was filmed almost naturally. Of course, no one was really killed, but the filming set in the scene was really huge. Even the doll that we saw in the first episode is just as gigantic in reality. It now stands in Jinxiong County, three hours away from Seoul. The second reason for the scene being epic is the crowd. There were actually 456 people in the scene, not counting the masked guards, and it's astounding. That, by the way, affected the safety of filming. The actors risked injury in the crush in the escape scene to the doors and risked painfully bumping into each other. Falls are not to be forgotten either. Many participants fell down in the chaos, including the main character, Shang Ji Hun. Even though they used mattresses on the set for this purpose, the scene cannot be called safe. But the other game was much more dangerous. Tug of War The third game, which was to be played by the participants, was memorable to many viewers for its scale. Here, the viewer sees for the first time really huge set. The giant field with the sensor doll and the playground with the large slide from the second game are also epic. But for me, the tug-of-war platform is even more epic. Teams stand on either side of the platform, which is dozens of meters above the ground, and the tug-of-war time begins. Those who lose go down with no chance of escape. Of course, the tug-of-war scene was filmed using a lot of computer graphics, but this didn't make the filming process completely safe. The actors, like their characters, were also standing on a platform above the ground, but it was actually much closer to the ground, a few meters from it. The actors, whose characters were destined to die, were literally hanging over a small abyss. This is dangerous in itself, plus when shooting, all the actors basically risked falling off the platform. And even though there were boxes and other safety equipment waiting for them at the bottom, nobody wanted to fall down. Fortunately, there were no injuries on the set, but the actors gave a lot of energy. The fifth game, The Glass Stepping Stones, is partly reminiscent of the rules of Tug of War because in case of defeat, the characters quit the game, dying from hitting the ground after falling. According to the plot, the distance from the bridge to the ground was very long, but of course it was different on the set. The bridge was the same as we saw on the screens, but it was about a meter and a half to the ground. It's not that much, is it? Yes, but even that was enough to make the actors uncomfortable. Ho Young Jun, who played the role of Kang Sai Byok, said that it was scary to shoot the scene. By the way, Squid Game became the acting debut for Ho Young Jun. I think the Korean supermodel nailed it. But let's get back to the scene. The actors really jumped into the tempered glass. There was no fragile glass on the set. Instead, the actors landed on a small platform that immediately went out from under their feet. That is, the actors literally experienced the sensation of falling down, hence the genuine emotions of fear. As for the scene in which Sang Woo pushes down the glass marker, player number 17, it was filmed differently. It was not a meter and a half to the ground, but more. And the actor had to fly down, being strapped to a life-saving rope, of course. Even though the rope was safe and there were boxes at the bottom, something could have gone wrong and the actor would have been injured. Fortunately, he didn't. Squid Game the sixth and final game, Squid Game, was not the easiest to film too. In this game, it was decided who would leave the mysterious island with billions of won. You can't say that the battle scene between Shang Ji Hun and Sang Wu was very dangerous, but it wasn't safe either. The actors played the scene without stuntmen, at least the close-up scenes were just that. There were a few moments in the scenes when something could have gone wrong, such as the scene of throwing sand in Sang Woo's eyes and the scene in which Sang Woo tries to finish off Ji Hun by hovering over him with a knife. Of course, props were used on the set, but the actors still took their chances with this episode. Fortunately, only their characters were injured, and the scene itself came out especially epic. The computer graphics and cinematic rain made it very dramatic. This game was the sixth and final one in the drama. By the way, did you know that director Huang dong Yuk originally planned to call the project Round 6 based on the number of games? Good thing he changed his mind because that title's boring. But you won't be bored when watching the drama itself. The creators have put a lot of details in it, many of which you probably missed when you first watched it. Let's fix that. It's time to find out the most interesting hidden details and secrets of Squid Game 
as well as get to know a couple of theories about the drama. Only two players, Ji Hun and Sang Woo, made it all the way to the final, and only Ji Hun finished the game. All the other 455 players, one way or another, quit. When watching the drama, it's hard to guess exactly how a particular character would die, but there were actually clues. For example, in the final episode, Sang Woo, lying on the field, commits suicide, and in the second episode, we see that he wanted to commit suicide by lying in a bathtub and inhaling acrid smoke. The main do-gooder of the drama, Pakistani Ali, dies because Sang Woo steals his marbles in the fourth game. Earlier, the character admitted that he stole a large sum of money from his boss. Number 67, Kang Sai Byuk, has also become a victim of Sang Woo. He stabbed her. Earlier, she threatened her enemy in the outside world. The same thing when she put a knife to his throat. Finally, the main villain, gangster, Zhang Dok Su, number 101, dies in the fifth game by falling to the ground from a bridge. If you remember, it was by jumping off the bridge that he escaped from the gangsters chasing him for the debts in the outside world. Speaking of Dok Su, actor Hao Sang Tai did a great job playing the role of an immoral bandit. He acted so cool that he seems to be just as mean and callous in real life. In fact, he's the opposite of his character. His Instagram account is full of pictures of cute kittens, and in one interview, the actor said that he shouldn't be scared because he wouldn't do anything harmful. But let's get back to the details. I should also mention Ji Hun. Although he didn't die, but the creator showed an interesting moment. In the second episode, while begging Sai Byok to set him free, he swears on his mother's head that he won't ask her for the money she stole from him earlier. As soon as Sai Byok frees Ji Hun, he starts demanding what she stole. Whether it's a coincidence or not, in the last episode, we found out that Ji Hun's mother has died. Therein lies one of the main philosophical undertones of the drama. We all get what we deserve. Games The clues were not only in front of the viewers, but also in front of the players. When the players first found themselves in the main room, it was all packed with beds. In such chaos, one would hardly pay attention to the walls, but the players should have done just that because there were symbolic clues painted on the walls in the form of pictures of the games. All the games from tug of war and honeycombs to glass stepping stones and marbles were depicted from the beginning. Had the players noticed the clues, it would have been much easier for them to play, but the images didn't start appearing until the end. It's not until just before the last game that we see all these drawings. Well, at least it was clear to the finalists that the last game to be played was Squid Game. One of the important events of the drama was the arrival of the VIPs. The VIPs in animal costumes and masks watched the latest games, enjoying their power and chatting amongst themselves. One of them said in one scene, the contest in Korea was the best. Many of you may not have paid attention to this phrase or given it much thought, but it makes it clear that the game in South Korea is not the only one. Apparently, similar games are held all over the world, and that's why the VIPs arrive so late, only for the final, because they must have been attending another game in another country. Another phrase from one of the VIPs who said that it's more interesting to watch the games live than on TV refers to the other games as well. It's possible that we'll be shown games outside of South Korea in the future. It's also possible that Netflix will please us with spin-offs or prequels on this theme. 001 Even though only Ji Hun finished the game, Ol Il Nam, player 001, who at the end turned out to be the main organizer and creator of the game, survived in addition to him. Many details indicated that he was in charge, his number, his excellent knowledge of the games, his sincere panic that stopped the riot, and more. But more interesting is the fact that Oh Il Nam could be Ji Hun's father. This too is indicated by several details that are easy to miss on the first viewing. For example, in one scene, Ji Hun says that he's lactose intolerant, to which Oh Il Nam replies, just like my son. In another scene, during the Marbles game, Il Nam wanders around the lined up neighborhood, marveling that the scenery resembles the neighborhood where he used to live. Ji Hun replies, saying that he was born in the same place. On top of that, the two characters had a very warm relationship for such a violent game. They supported each other constantly. Ji Hun helped the ailing Il Nam, and Il Nam gave him his jacket with the number 001 before the fourth game. Perhaps it was his way of protecting Ji Hun because he knew the guards would not kill a man with a jacket with his number. It's possible that the second season will tell this story in detail. After all, there's a reason why Ji Hun's mother didn't say a word about his father during the entire season. That's all, guys. Are you waiting for the second season? And if so, what do you think we'll see in it? Share your thoughts and theories in the comments. Thanks for watching and see you later.